federal government will need to boost funding by $138 million a year to provide clean drinking water to First Nations. Now, that is according to a new report from the Parliamentary Budget Officer. The PDO notes that there is an infrastructure funding gap, but not enough, excuse me, that there's infrastructure funding, but not enough money for operational costs. Indigenous Services Minister Patty Haidu says the government will address the funding gap. Currently we are funding 100% of operation and maintenance, that's as of budget 2021. So, you know, it'll be helpful to understand what is left to um, close in terms of whether, uh, whether or not it is a formula that needs to be adjusted. I know that uh, this is very technical, but, uh, you know, there was a, a new formula negotiated with the AFN and other partners two years ago. So we'll be looking at what exactly it means and will take to close that gap. But yes, I'm committed to closing it. So the minister calls it complicated. Let's understand where this funding gap came from with Yves Giroux, the uh, parliamentary budget officer for the country. He is in Ottawa. Mr. Giroux, good to have you on the program. Um, this is not about building the infrastructure for clean drinking water on First Nations. This is about operating them. H how do we get to a gap with the actual cost to operate those systems? Well, in the report, we looked at the funding that's available based on past budgets and funding commitments by the federal government. And we also looked at how much funding will be needed to address the growing population, as well as the needs of the uh, First Nation communities that depend on public water and wastewater system. And we find that while there is clearly sufficient money to address these needs for the infrastructure itself, all the infrastructure, the water and wastewater treatment plants and systems, there will likely not be enough money for the operating and maintenance of these uh, these uh, water and wastewater treatment plants. And that is a very, uh, very uh, important funding that has to be put in place if one is to ensure that First Nation communities do indeed not only have the infrastructure in place, but that somebody is there to operate these systems on a 24-7 basis, obviously. So we, we just heard the Indigenous Services Minister there, Patty Haidu, saying the government has been providing 100% of the funding for the operational side of things. But um, has, your, has her office uh, reached out to your office to explain how this gap has come to, to pass? Well, the minister is probably referring to a change in the funding arrangements between the federal government and First Nation communities. Uh, up until 2020, the federal government was providing 80% of funding for First Nations water and wastewater treatment plants. And in 2020-21, it changed the formula to cover 100% of these, uh, these expenses. So that's what she's referring to when she's saying that she's the, the government is paying 100%, but 100% of needs that we think have been assessed as probably lower than what they indeed are. So what the, the report found is that there's not enough money currently set aside in the government's uh, budget to fund what would be optimal in terms of operations and maintenance of these uh, systems. It kind of sounds a bit like for Canadians who actually have a dental plan where you get, say, 80% of coverage, but it's based on the 1995 rates or something like that. Or uh, what is a more, uh, I think a good analogy is that the government is keen on building the water and wastewater treatment plants and the systems, but it doesn't fully think about how to maintain and operate them on a full-time basis. But that sounds like a problem. Indeed, because um, what's the point of having uh, top-notch water, water treatment plants if you don't have the qualified personnel, the tools, or the, the repairs to ensure that they are in uh, in working conditions uh, on a permanent basis. So it, it's, go ahead. Yeah, I, I mean, just thinking this out, the, you know, the government says that it has made a priority of ending the boil water advisories on First Nations, which have gone on for far, far too, too long. I mean, they shouldn't have been there in the first place, but there have been many promises, many dates that have been missed. Uh, is there potentially the threat that in places where the boil water advisory has ended, that there isn't the money to continue the staffing and the training that's necessary to ensure a community doesn't have problems with infrastructure that has been built and paid for by the feds. It's a, it's a problem and that's why we have identified that there's a funding gap for the operations and maintenance. And that means that current systems that are working and that are not subject to 
um, and advisory, they are, some of them are at high risk, others at medium risk of, um, of failing to provide drinkable water, potable water to, to communities they serve. So that's why we have identified that funding gap for operating and maintenance because it puts some some water treatment plants and water systems at risk should should something happen and um, that there's about only half of the 550 first nations communities provided where water is provided by a public system where they they are at low risk so almost half of the 550 communities we looked at are at medium to high risk of failing in their uh, water system. What does that say to you? That's a big number. Um, that says that the government is really is really taken by the issue when it comes to the infrastructure, but the uh, long-term, less sexy um, aspect of operating and maintaining these systems is not as well thought through or considered when the budget is being elaborated for these First Nations waters and water and wastewater systems. So there's a lot of emphasis put on building the systems, but less than there should be on the ongoing operations of these systems, which puts them at risk potentially if that funding gap is not addressed in the near future. Yeah, don't, don't celebrate when you've just run half the marathon. There's an awful lot of work still uh, to be done. Uh, Mr. Giroux, l l let, me, um, l let me just ask you, is the, the, there is sort of this timeline of 2025, 2026, um, uh, for future funding. That's when, when the future funding is, is earmarked until. But do you think that would be the earliest at which we would see the actual end of all boil water advisories? Even though I, I acknowledge you're saying that even communities that don't have them now are at risk of getting them again. Uh, that's a very difficult question to answer because it depends on the multitude of factors, notably the availability of competent, certified operators. Mm -hmm. And you can have a very top of the art, state of the art, sorry, system, but if you don't have the proper employees to operate them, it can mean a return to uh, boiling advisories. Yves Giroux, certainly appreciate your explanation of this. Thank you. My pleasure. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.